had to go home It's like a song in an Irish bar Walking along Charlestown Wishing you were in Banner Strand Holding your nephew's hands We walked along the waterfront Up Bunker Town on me We met at the monument Good evening and welcome to Charlestown Live. My name is Diane Grant, and I'm the host for you this evening. Uh, first, I would like to thank our sponsors, Zelma Lacey House and Charlestown Against Drugs. Without their generous support, this uh, wonderful program would not be possible. So I'm just going to get right into our programming tonight, because we have a lot to, uh, to pack in. And I want to introduce Kristen Quinn, who is the owner of Charlestown Yoga and also um, a very successful blogger who does Misadventures in Mommyhood. This proves to be a very interesting show tonight. And um, I just want to say that if you have, maybe you have any small kids, they want to leave the room. Yeah. Because <laughs> Kristen's going to be very blunt. Um, and this is a very timely subject for me because 19 days ago, my granddaughter, Callie Jessica Brennan, was born and with my wonderful son, Zach, and uh, his wonderful wife, Ashley. So tonight, Kristen's going to be talking about being a new mother and all that goes with it. Kristen, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what's the blog's name and what's it all about? Okay. Um, first of all, thanks for having me, Diane. Um, my blog is called Misadventures in Mommyhood. I actually bought the URL, so it's misadventuresinmommyhood.com. Mm -hmm. And I started it when my now one and a half year old um, was about eight months old. And I've been blogging ever since. It's, it stars her, her alias is Little Miss P. Mm -hmm. I never really give out her real name. So um, it just kind of follows the trials and tribulations of you know pregnancy, delivery, um, and then mother, mothering, motherhood. So mm. and she's um, she's got some funny antics. So. She's a she's she a must fun take star to you. follow. <laughs> she does. I hear she that does. you were quite a, a handful when you were I, a baby. I, I heard that my, right from your my mother's mother. Mouth. Yeah, I know. You yeah, did. she told me. I know. Yeah. I know. She, yes, she definitely does. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's been great. We um, I I haven't been doing it that long, but I've gotten some great response, um, not only on the blog but also um, on Facebook on my fan page. So it's been a lot of fun. You have a lot. You have a pretty good following. I do. Yeah. I. It's so funny because when I started, I just kind of was doing it for fun and now I actually have this following that you know they look forward to the next blog so I'm kind of like ooh, I hope I hope things keep popping up because I actually never plan any of the stories they just happen organically it's life it's total truth in life yeah exactly yeah, it is exactly. it's life and it's so relevant I think it's funny because I think I've never and I'm a, a born and bred Charlestown resident mm -hmm. have seen so many babies in my life in Charlestown. Oh, oh my I know. lord. I know. It's it must insane. be something in the water. Yeah. Maybe. It's great. There's so <laughs> many babies. There's so many yeah. strollers. There's yeah. so many pregnant women. It's just wonderful to yeah. see all these young families in the community. Yeah, it's a great network too. But I did find in going through, you know, pregnancy and, and beyond, there wasn't really anything that you could get the true story from. Everybody told me that, you know, I would I would delivery would be an ease, you know, pregnancy's no problem. Mothering, you know, you're going to be great on it at it. So I went into it so cocky, and it just like hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> it it does, was not yeah. easy at all, and it still yeah. isn't easy. I mean, yeah. it's it's a blast, but in the beginning, nobody really talks about how you know hard it is, really. Right, and how so. time consuming it is. Right. Yes, and yes. and how your life is completely different. You know, people tell you that, but you just don't really you don't really get it until you go through it. No, it, it that's for sure. Now, before we get into the real nitty gritty, which it was about the blog, and mm -hmm. I'd love you to do a reading tonight yeah, if absolutely, you could. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, what? Why a blog? I'm a, I'm still a little thing because to me, I think a blog is something that I'll, something else I have to do every day. But what's? How does that work, and how could it possibly, you know, evolve down the road? Yeah. Um, well. I, you know, I'm not, I, I don't consider myself, it's funny because people call me a blogger. I never really considered myself a blogger, but I had all these fun stories I wanted to tell that were the truth. And everybody kept telling me, you should blog, you should blog, because mm. it gets your word out there, whether it's about, you know, your life or about your business or whatever it is. Um, so I just, you know, started two stories and I, and I threw it out there and just the response was crazy. I mean, it's, everybody wanted, I, you can actually, there's a stat counter. 
you can read how many people are reading your blog and checking in. So that it's really cool. Um, so yeah, so it's it's great for business for for yourself. Ultimately, I would love to be published. That's kind of the end goal. Um, a couple people have already asked for it in hard print, but as you know, that's a whole other job trying to get published. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's kind of the end goal, but. So um, you would right accumulate now, all fun. the stories, mm -hmm. and then you would yeah. put them into a book. A lot of people get started that way. Um, yeah. Not that I'm comparing myself at all to her, but Scary Mommy is everywhere now, and she started out with a blog, and now scary she's mommy? published. Her, her, her name is Scary Mommy. Is she she's, scary, or is it scary being a mommy? Um, I think she thinks <laughs> she's scary. <laughs> Uh, but it's sim it's a similar type of like you know this is really what mothering is all about it's it's not all hunky dory it's you know yeah it's it raw is, and real as we said before it is it's wonderful and it's raw and it's real yeah so yeah. Um, do you think that you have a little bit of an excerpt that you could read from oh dear we're gonna jump right into that do you want to huh? do that sure, now or sure, do you keep not? on talking about uh, the blog no no well we might as well just break the ice. Uh <laughs> And then afterwards, we can discuss. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I do. Um, I did a poll recently on my fa my fan page. Uh, what was everybody's favorite? So I chose the one that um, every, this seemed to resonate with everybody. Again, I think it's because nobody talks about it, and I just go ahead and talk about it. So I chose that you one go, to read. Girl. But you okay. go. This one's called Tales from the Underbelly, um, and it starts out. It probably doesn't make sense to read this if you are pregnant or wish to be soon. Just saying. Although I sure as hell wish someone told me after delivery I'd be soaking in a sitz bath, taking stool softener every hour, and wearing maxi pads in old lady underwear like an eighth grader. I probably wouldn't have listened anyway. <laughs> I was too busy planning my playlist for the hospital and making sure I had cute post-delivery outfits packed. Little did I know I was about to have the most unglamorous experience of my life. Five things that surprised the crap out of me after giving birth. Number one. Did you know you can't be moved from the delivery room to the postpartum room until you pee in front of the nurse? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to prove you can go. Let me tell you, the last thing you feel like doing after giving birth to a Mack truck is getting up from bed, walking the five miles to the bathroom, and then sitting down on a cold toilet in front of a nurse while she waits until you go. I felt like my insights might fall right down into the toilet. My pride already had. Number two. There you go. Speaking of surprising the crap out of me, You'll most likely be backed up for a week dreading this. You'll probably Google it and see buzzwords like, I hope I can say this on TV, perineum, bowel movement, and anal cleansing. All of these words are horrifying, and so is the first time you go. Just know it will pass, pun completely intended. It's going to happen, and the more you fight it, the worse you'll feel. Don't forget to take your stool softeners. So hot, right? <laughs> three. So glamorous. Yeah. <laughs> Your pride just goes away. Yeah. Number three, you have to use a squirt bottle to clean yourself. I'm just going to let that one resonate. There are pictures in my blog, but I won't be sharing them here, of products, yeah. Yeah. Not, 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 not of me. Not pictures of the squirt bottle? N yes, of products, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's hysterical. That's, this, is a, this one has a picture of the squirt bottle. That's why I'm letting it resonate. The nurses will give you the most dreadful-looking disposable underwear to wear in the hospital. It's like wrapping yourself in an ace bandage. You will look at them with sad eyes and wonder if you'll ever wear your pretty little hanky-pankies again. But you will miss those granny panties when you get home. They're just so convenient. And you will soak in a sitz bath to feel better about your hemorrhoids. But really, <laughs> this will make you feel 90 years old and defeated. I remember having the nurse check me out day two in the hospital. I rolled back over and she handed me this contraption. I looked at her like she was crazy. What is this for? She replied, hemorrhoids. To which I replied, but I don't have hemorrhoids. To which she replied, you will. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I watched as my pride sunk into a round pot for the second time. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, so those are the top five. And then I kind of end it with, for my pregos that decided to read this anyway, a year ago I was four weeks postpartum celebrating Mother's Day by sitting on a donut, getting my boobs not on, and crying at every Tide commercial. This year I was greeted in the, <laughs> this year I was greeted in the morning by an endearing one-year-old holding flowers, showing me how to sniff them, a lively discussion using her three favorite words, apple, dog, and up, and the most delicious nose kisses before bed. The hemorrhoids were worth it. So I always make sure to tell people, you know, the there's good side. side too. Totally, see, now, totally. As, as he, Ashley, there, there is, there's hope. Yeah. There will be. Oh, absolutely. Look, on Mother's Definitely. Day next year, you'll be like, oh, look at how cute she yeah, is. Yeah. And, and she's going to be a little flower, <laughs> and the hemorrhoids will be yeah, worth it. And that stuff just goes away. But again, nobody, because, I think because it goes away, and the, the good stuff is so great, Nobody, nobody really talks about well, the horrifying stuff. Well, otherwise, there would be one child in the whole Exactly, I know. Only have one I know, child. I kind of feel like a little, I always put, you know, a disclaimer 
don't read this if you don't want to know. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, I, I have to have another one. You forget all yeah, about you totally all those, forget about all it. those yeah. things. And, and actually, some of my biggest fans are, are men because they don't know anything about this stuff, and they love reading about it because they, they want to know what to expect. They their wife is, is crying on the couch. Totally. Yeah. 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 That's so. real. I, I love that. Oh, thanks. And you know what I love about that is the honesty because... And I think the more that people don't feel like they're alone in something mm. and that, you know, most women feel that way after they give birth and that it gets better, mm -hmm. would it, because th there's, there's issues with the, how fast they kick them out of the hospital now. I know. I mean, even when I, I had know. my I kids, it was like leave. five days. I know. Oh, that's it, nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. My mother and her sisters... They would go in to have a baby. They used to call it the Lion Inn. It was Boston Lion Inn. And it was um, 10 days in the hospital. Wow. That's and amazing. And you were waited on hand and foot. I, ours, I believe that it's common now to do three, and it's not enough time. You go, I think you it's can't believe. 48 hours, unless it's a Oh, seat. unless it was, a, yeah. Well, I actually, the way I delivered it was I got the extra day based on insurance, and I used every minute of it. What did you have, like 3 o'clock, and then at 3.05 you could stay another day? Yeah, it was something weird like that, and I took it. <laughs> Okay. Definitely. It's just crazy when you ha they hand you that baby, you're thinking, like, don't I need some sort of test before I go home? Or, like, do I just get to go home with this baby? It's crazy. But That's amazing, yeah. It is. But because, she's, yeah. yeah she's and you totally... look at them and you think to yourself, oh, my God, I'm totally responsible for this it's, little it's tiny crazy. human being. It's crazy. And it's... you can, like, totally mess with them up. Really. I know. <laughs> Everything's the mother's fault. I'm just going to tell you I know. that right no, now. No, believe me, I know. I know. now I'm a grandmother and nothing is my fault. I know. Isn't that nice? Oh, I know. Aunts wonderful. and grandmothers have it very well. Yeah, you could just show up and you're like all fabulous and you give them all fabulous clothes. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh, great, great, great. <laughs> totally. And then, you know, then you, you you can go home. But you forget about the days. I mean, I was doing it to you in the green room. I'm like, oh, everything's great. We're yeah, great. we're great. It, yeah, and it, probably if you had interviewed me 30 years ago, you wouldn't have thought that. When my yeah. son Zach was born, I'd be like, oh, I don't, I, I don't, know. It's I don't hard. know about this. It's hard, you know. Yeah. yeah, and so this really resonates with women, and that's why they like it. Is it's so I think honest. so. It's honest, yeah. And and again, I never plan what I'm going to write. You know, sometimes I'll write something down and it. It doesn't feel right, so I'll send it to my sisters who know me so well, and they just say, you know, no, that's not the truth. I'm like, you know what, you're right. I, let me let me scratch it and rewrite it from my heart in, in the truth, and then it, it always comes out, and people really seem to respond to it. So That's great. So how is it built over the, the, the you've been doing it for almost a year? Yeah, a little bit less than a year, and um, it was really organic, honestly. A lot of people just sent it to their friends, um, you know, people sharing it. Um, Facebook is a huge, huge uh, vehicle to use to, to spread the word because not only can you blast your blog to Facebook directly from Blogger, you can also start your whole page. So there's a lot of things that happen in Little Miss P's life that I don't necessarily want to write a full blog about, um, but I can just put it in my status on my fan page, and it's still really funny, and people, yeah. you know, will like it or talk about it and comment about it. Um, so that's a great way to get kind of the word out there too, and then they can know when a blog is coming because I'll say, you know, blog coming on Monday, you know, look out for it, and then you can yeah. blast it. So. Yeah. And now, is there some way that blogs can tie into um, the, the, the impression that I was under would? Say if you write a blog, it creates another page. So then it goes on to your website. And the more pages that you have, the easier you're found in a search. So say if I yeah. did a blog, mm -hmm. say if I did a search on Google right. and I said blogs about new mothers, mm -hmm. would yours come up? Uh you know, I think there's there's a whole science to that, I, I believe, and I'm not I, again, I I'm not like a a true blogger because it's more just kind of like something fun that I do. I do think there's a way if you get searched enough and people hit on your page that you're going to start to move up kind of like the Google That's rankings. That's all mystery stuff to me. It, listen, it's like it goes into this big computer and I'm like, bye bye I, I have no, no yeah, idea what it happens. It's, it's like in happens. the cloud. Yeah, it's in the I'm, clouds, I'm with yeah. you. I'm, I know, I'm, it's in the cloud. Yeah, I it's consider like, myself more of a writer than like a true like blogger. Even if you look at my site, it's pretty basic. You know, it's really just kind of the, the message. And you put that pictures up on there. I do, yeah. yeah. Of, I do. Of horrible not Never of me. I, I never, well, that's not true. There is two pictures up there of me, but a lot of products that, you know,